In the top stories, controversy and congratulations follow Windy's double victory. Police investigate a city shooting and White Hill residents cry out for help again. Welcome to Nation News from Monday, April 4th, 2016. I'm Natasha Beckles. It seems you can't have West Indies cricket without controversy. Even as the cricketing world is buzzing about the men and women capturing a historic World T20 double, Captain Darren Sammy's post-match speech is also creating waves. Sammy spoke about the trials the team faced and the challenges of coach Phil Simmons, who you may recall was banned for a series after making comments about selection policy. The captain lauded his band of merry champions, commended the heads of CARICOM and chided the board for its lack of support. Take a listen. You know, um, it was us in our own little circle. This win we dedicated to all the fans in the Caribbean. And lastly, I really want to find the heads of CARICOM. Throughout this tournament, they've been supporting the team. We've gotten emails, we've gotten calls. Prime Minister Mitchell, I know what he's trying to do. You know, and I really want to thank him. He sent a very inspiring message for the team this morning. And I'm yet to hear from our own cricket ball. That is very disappointing. And for today, I'm going to celebrate with these 15 men and this coaching staff. I don't know when I'm going to be playing with these guys again because we don't get selected for one day cricket. We don't know when we're going to be playing T20. So this win, I want to thank you, my team. I want to thank you, coaching staff. Everybody in the West End is a champion. Board President Dave Cameron later released a statement apologizing for what he deemed inappropriate comments and promised a full review after the IPL. Meanwhile, Carlos Brathwaite made an unforgettable World Cup debut, spanking four consecutive sixes in the final over as West Indies beat England by six wickets. Player of the match, Marlon Samuel, scored an unbeaten 85. At 18 to play with. What a start to this final over. Six, six. Stokes to come again. Oh, it's high in the air again. Oh, it's three sixes. And that's his 18 gone. Look at the West Indies. Look at England. Let's see Carlos Brathwaite. I said he was a superstar under construction. Earlier, the women claimed their first title, upsetting three-time champions Australia by eight wickets, chasing down 149 for victory. Teenager Hayley Matthews struck 66 and Captain Stephanie Taylor 59. Sports Minister Stephen Lashley was among those congratulating both teams. Players are showing that they are serious about reasserting the dominance and the of the West Indies in cricket, and this certainly brings a lot of a lot of hope. Uh, certainly, a lot of reasons to celebrate across the Caribbean. We have been waiting for victory at the senior level. We've seen the juniors, the under nineteen, demonstrating that there is still uh, a lot of fight, a lot of talent in West Indies cricket. They are the future and they led the way. Now we have the women and the men being totally uh, focused on bringing victory to West Indies fans. Two men have been treated for gunshot injuries following a dispute at Hink Street, the city, on Sunday night. Police Pol Public Relations Officer Acting Assistant Superintendent David Welch said the two men are from the city and one received an injury to his midsection. It is not believed the men were directly involved in the altercation. The incident occurred after a cruise on the Jolly Roger, but the boat's management told Nation News it was not on the boat or the compound. Residents of landslide-prone Whitehill St. Andrew say they once again feel that they have been forgotten by the authorities. Last December, they were singing the praises of the Ministry of Transport and Works, which constructed a temporary access road after the main road collapsed in November 2014. Now spokesperson Carlita Andrews tells Nation News the road has been sinking into holes and each day they have to call MTW to get the gaps filled. She said the land slippage had reached such a state that some houses which were standing last week are no longer there. To make matters worse, 
Ms. Andrews said they have been without water for four weeks. She said the residents need urgent relief. If you traverse the city regularly, you may be getting increasingly concerned about the number of vagrants on the streets. Well, new chairman of the Barbados Vagrants and Homeless Society, Anthony De Silva, says the organization may soon be in a better position to offer shelter. Mr. De Silva and President Kimar Safri said they will be meeting with officials of the Ministries of Social Care, Housing and Finance this week for assistance in getting a permanent home. This will allow the charity to expand its services to those in need. Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Nevis, Dr. Timothy Harris, says his country's citizenship by investment program is worthy of emulation by other Caribbean countries. Speaking at the University of the West Indies Cave Hill last week, he said the program was making significant contributions to his government's revenues and could boost ailing economies. Mr. Harris, however, cautioned that there must be a regional standard and due diligence so that when an applicant is refused in one country, he or she doesn't get accepted by another. Hundreds packed St. George Parish Church on Friday to say their final farewells to Valerie Pitt, the 61-year-old Tichborne St. Michael resident who lost her battle with cancer, was remembered for her warm hospitality and her culinary skills. Delivering the eulogy, the nation's editor emeritus Harold Hoyt said she was also a doting mother and grandmother. Prime Minister Frondel Stewart, Opposition Leader Mia Motley, Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair and Opposition Member of Parliament for St. George North, Glenn Clark, were among the many attending the funeral. The Christchurch Parish Committee has kicked off a month of celebrations in the lead-up to November's finale of the Community Independence Celebrations. Chairman of the committee, Andrea Marshall, spoke to Nation News on Sunday following a service at Christchurch Parish Church where the commemorative broken trident was on display. We have not finalized everything as yet, but we have a lecture coming up with Mr. Ambassador Bobby Morris. Um, we have cake sales and we have other activities like cricket, which is the 23rd of April. And there are many activities we will have besides the trident, but the trident will be at some of our activities as well, because especially the cricket match, the trident will be there. In sport, Hosts Barbados, Jamaica and Bermuda are the only unbeaten teams after the first two nights of the Caribbean Netball Association Jean Pierre Youth Tournament. On Monday night, Barbados defeated Dominica 29-13, Jamaica beat Grenada 45-11 and Bermuda edged St. Lucia 31-29. Matches continue at the Netball Stadium each night until the finals on Friday. And finally, a botched promotional campaign for Rhode Island has led to the resignation of a top marketing official. Why? It included a video that showed Reykjavik, Iceland, rather than the state capital of Providence. The state is expected to recoup the U.S. $120,000 it spent on the development of the video, which was quickly mocked online. Rhode Islanders also lambasted the slogan, Cooler and Warmer and officials are expected to seek public feedback before resuming the campaign. And that's Nation News for Monday. For more news, log on to nationnews.com, as well as YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Remember to pick up your Daily Nation on Tuesday or subscribe to our e-paper. Thank you so much for joining us.